Every child needs love and the hope of a bright future, but thousands in Virginia don't have that. Those are the children in foster care. For the third year, 10 News anchor Jenna Zipton is highlighting the need for foster and adoptive families in 30 Days of Hope. Now, from this series, we've had many children matched with families and successful adoptions. Chelsea and Eric Holland from Axton adopted two children last year. For the next 30 days, you'll see the faces of children from our area who can be adopted into your family. I like sports. I like helping out with the animals. I like going into the woods and discovering new things. 16-year-old Michael Thomas wants to go to college to eventually become a veterinarian or do something with technology. I like all the things that technology can do. I just know that if I do technology, I want to build things and fix things. With all the gadgets, computers, and cameras here at WSLS, there's always something to work on, as he saw during our tour. But typically a repair like this would take maybe, you know, 30 minutes. He's just one of the 5,300 children in foster care across Virginia. More than 700 can be adopted, including Michael. So every child deserves a safe, loving, and supportive home where they can feel included and have a sense of belonging. Taylor Vaughn is a Roanoke County Family Services Specialist and Michael's case manager. He can crack a joke really fast. He's very witty. He makes really good grades in school. And what would the perfect family for Michael look like? I would say somebody that's not going to give up on him, that will work with him through all the trial and errors. But Michael is a really good kid. And his perfect family? When we eat breakfast, we all eat together. We talk about our likes and what we want to do today as a family activity. And we just hang out and we go do outings and have fun. And we all care about each other and love each other. Michael also likes camping, hiking, football, basketball, and wrestling. For the next 30 days, you'll see the faces of children who can be adopted just like Michael. You'll hear what they like and how they have hopes and dreams of becoming a doctor or police officer, just like the other kiddos. Consider taking in one of these children. You can give them a home and hope. We are just a few weeks away from Christmas, but there are children in our region who won't be waking up with a family to open their presents with. 10 News anchor Jenna Zipton introduces us to a young man who has a lot of love to give in 30 Days of Hope. Evan is loving, he's kind, he's outgoing, he's very athletic, he's a good cook. What do you like to cook? I hear you're quite the cook. Mac and cheese and grilled cheese. His secret to a perfect grilled cheese? Mayo instead of butter. I like math because I only get to do stuff mathematical. And science, I actually get to do experiments. History, I get to do fun stuff. The 10-year-old has been in foster care for years and currently lives in a group home with other boys. He's been there the longest. Heather Wright is his caseworker and says he makes everyday things fun. The perfect kind of family for Evan would be a family that's very outgoing. Um, Evan likes to travel and do things, different activities, so a family that's very active. He also likes basketball. I'm the best on the team about layups. We played some basketball and had a blast. He also told me he likes watching football and basketball on TV. He likes playing in the water at the beach and wants to have pets. A dog or a cat would be just fine with him, as long as he has a mom and a dad and a family to call his own. He's just special all around for one. Um, Evan is very loving. You can't help but be grown to him and attached to him quickly. He laughed a lot when we were there and he made us laugh too. He wants a family, just like the other children we're featuring during 30 Days of Hope, trying to find families for the hundreds of kids in foster care across Virginia. Brianna is creative and loves to draw. She also channels her artistic side into baking. I was cooking cupcakes one day and I was beside my mix the whole time and somehow pepper got into my mix and I taste tested it the next day and I was like, I taste pepper, that's weird. And so I asked one of my friends to taste it and she was like, yeah, I taste pepper too, but I don't see a problem with it. They, they liked it. <laughs> don't know how, but they did. This 15 year old has a great personality and smile. She loves to read, 
But what she doesn't share a lot. My mom and dad were really abusive to drugs. That's how she ended up in foster care seven years ago. It's been pretty hard. I've been through 10 different homes. I don't, I don't see my brother. And two years ago, um, I figured out I had twin siblings. And I don't know where they are. I've never met them in person. She currently lives in a group home, sharing a room with three other girls because there aren't enough foster families and there wasn't a place for her. Group homes tend to be more formal. Children share rooms. There's usually a, a parent that's in the a house parent that's in the home 24 7 to provide monitoring. Uh, it's group activities. There's lots and lots of rules. It's different than being in a normal home. Misty Greer is a DePaul Community Resources Adoption Specialist. I think that a lot of people are not quite aware about how many children are waiting. The reality is not every child finds a home right away. And unfortunately, there's always a need for foster homes in our area. We always have a shortage of homes. Um, so it's a challenge at times to find the right placement for children. After all she's been through, Brianna is still optimistic someone will adopt her. There's always that right family. You just got to keep looking. Brianna loves dogs and riding bikes outside too. She wants a family just like the other children were featuring during 30 Days of Hope, trying to find families for the hundreds of kids in foster care across Virginia. These brothers play together often. Five-year-old Ray has a bright smile. But two years ago, he was a much different little boy coming into foster care. When Ray came to us, he was two and a half years old, nonverbal. He would uh, point and make noises um, to communicate with us, and so it was very difficult. Foster mom Virginia Van says it's taken a long time to get here. More than 1,000 days after meeting the Vans, he's walking with them into the courthouse, becoming an official part of the family. Today, he's getting adopted. It's really exciting because I get to have another brother to play with and to have fun with. We all agree it's made our lives better, caring for Ray and, and giving our family to him. Dozens of people came to witness this day. Roanoke County caseworkers, family, and even the person who first reported this case and led to Ray getting out of an abusive home. Before the judge signed the paperwork, Virginia and Bobby Van made sure Ray knew he is loved. Our family has absolutely thrived, and we are better with Ray in it. He's brought life, love, laughter <laughs> to our home. The reason we've been so excited is because it makes, you know, it, it lets everyone know that no matter what, we'll always love you, you'll know, always be in our home, always be a part of our family. We belong to each other. And I'm so lucky that you call me dad. We're so happy. But you're part of our family, make our family better. The judge makes it official, and Ray becomes a van. Done deal. We've seen this little guy come so far. There's been a lot of healing, there's a lot of happiness, there's a lot of joy. For us, it's kind of making our family complete. You know, just that realization that we got to know him, and then he really kind of along the way chose to call us mom and dad, and you know, we love him as our son. The Vans say they're raising the next generation of foster and adoptive parents because their children are interested in helping other children like Ray when they grow up. As we continue 30 Days of Hope, we want to tell you about Joseph, the 11 year old. Look at that smile. He loves to be called Jojo. He's very talkative and has a vivid imagination. When telling a story, he's very animated, acting out the scene. Jojo has a hearty appetite, and there aren't many foods he doesn't like. His favorite thing to play with? Dinosaurs. He enjoys collecting them and reading about all the different types. He also likes Legos, watching cartoons, and does well playing on his own. And you can eat it when you're not. Chicken noodle soup. Nine children. <laughs> it's pretty big and different. We don't all look the same. Wyatt Whitlow is the second oldest in the Simonis family. He was just 13 when his mom took in a foster child. I was jealous at first because I wasn't like, I've always been like the little brother. Am I making beautiful stuff? But four years later, that family's grown, and so has Wyatt. 
some things are meant to be like these kids. I'm supposed to help them. They live with me. They live here. This is their house. I'm going to do what they need me to do. Seeing them interact and how they love each other every day is a miracle to me, how much they love and support each other and are truly a family. That is the best reward of adoption. Let's see here. Mom, Sophia Simonez does it all by herself as a single mom. It's wonderful if all children can have a mom and a dad, but that's not always the case, and uh, no one that is single should be afraid to foster. She says some children actually need to only have a mother in their life while they heal from years of abuse or fears of men. She's adopted four children, including 10-year-old Ashton. I like everything that we do. We go to the beach in the summer. We do a lot of cool activities in the fall, and I play football. Two more children will be adopted soon, including this little one. Take a picture of it. It's just always someone to do something with. Wyatt says he's proud of his mom, and he's learned a lot, too. It's taught me to care a little bit more about everything, because some people never have half of what others have. All children need families, so it's very important that we have loving homes for these children. She encourages you to ask questions if you're interested because many of the fears you may have may not be true. We also have a link to many of the other myths about foster care and adoption on WSLS.com. More than 300 Virginia children in foster care are living with a relative. In Lynchburg and Roanoke County, about 10% of those children in care are with family. And tonight, 30 Days of Hope, 10 News anchor Jenna Zipton explains why keeping that connection is so important and a new Virginia program to keep those bonds going. Don't knock it down. Just like the pieces of this game, the Scott family fits together too. She went into foster care the day she turned five years old, she was having birthday cake, and social services removed her from her home. Marley Prophet Scott spent five months in foster care before grandparents Joy and Donnie Scott could bring her to Virginia. We did not want her to grow up thinking that she didn't have a family. I love living in Virginia. This is called kinship care. It's part of the foster care system. We want to help. You know, we want to keep these children connected with their families. We don't want to have to, you know, send them somewhere else or, you know, place them with a family they may not be familiar with. Dominique Sparrow with Roanoke City Department of Social Services says with every new foster care case, they try to find family in the first 30 days. The family members go through background checks and training. If the child can't return to their biological parents, children 14 and over decide if they want to be adopted. If adoption is ruled out, that's when kin gap comes into play a new program for Virginia. Kin Gap was really needed because we were noticing that there were a lot of families who wanted to take care of their family members, but may not have had the financial means to take care of an additional family member. Kin Gap gives the family taking care of the child's services, including money and health insurance. Our children thrive better when they're in their community, when they're with their family like the Scots, who were planning on traveling and connecting with old friends. But they say adopting Marley tops that. Retirement looks a whole lot different. Most of what we do now is centered around Marley's activities. It looks a lot different, but it's not worse by any means. It's probably better for us. It seems like we're both, all of us are enjoying it. I'm actually really happy that I live with them. That was fun. Isn't that sweet? Sometimes family members take care of children outside of the foster care system, but to qualify for the state benefits, it has to be facilitated through the Department of Social Services.